Good morning from Krakow, Poland. Today's video is gonna be a little bit more bleak than our last one where we sang and danced and ate and danced in a circle. We just jumped on a train this morning and we're gonna take a few hours through Auschwitz. So we're gonna take you around and show you what it looks like inside. It's definitely a must. There's no way we could come here and not go. Yeah. Especially, I'm, I'm a huge history buff, so yeah. I'm excited, but in a different kind of way. We're gonna go with the guide and we'll try to, try to keep up with the guide and show you as much as we can. But yeah, we'll see you when we get there. Before we continue, don't forget to press the subscribe button for more videos like this. So they give you these headphones so that you could hear the guide. So it has connects to this like radio and everyone has their own pair of headphones so that everyone can hear. Pretty cool. <laughs> So they say the names of all the victims as you walk through the tunnel and all the way until you get to the very end. It's very ominous. Already feels pretty heavy and it's just started. This is where the camp director and a lot of the officers stay. The buildings that you see here are the 20 buildings that survived. These were the actual buildings where the prisoners were kept, where, where doctors also did experiments on the children. So when you go inside each house, it kind of depicts a certain situation on what happened to this camp in particular. So this building is where all the prisoners were registered and tattooed and given their striped pajamas. It's the uh, medical experiments building. We're about to enter where they did their executions in the basement, and we can't bring you in. Sorry.
We're going to take a look in the gas chambers, the last one standing. So a guy just said that 20 to 25 percent of the Nazis that came here to work said no, they didn't want to work here because it was too violent. They didn't want to just people, and they were allowed to go back and find other work. So apparently they had a choice. Hmm. So that's the end of this part of the tour, and now we're going to go to Auschwitz-Birkenau, which is the bigger bigger one about like three kilometers away so now we're in Birkenau or Auschwitz 2 this place is so much bigger it's the one that looks very familiar with the train tracks and the barbed wire and the little buildings wow. train tracks just lead directly inside right through the front gate Pretty crazy. Kind of don't really know what to think or feel. It's pretty ridiculous though. It makes Auschwitz one look like a five-star hotel. This is kind of insane. Walking here, when you think about everything that happened here, who built those train tracks and what happened behind the fans and all that stuff. So the war ended when they were in construction of a large piece of this. So the older brick buildings were the first, and then the wooden buildings, and then the furthest ones were never completely constructed or moved around due to weather conditions and such. So that boxcar is an actual boxcar that was used to transport people and they happened to find it in a private collector in the Netherlands and they purchased it and had it brought here. So 
we said in one row, 19 buildings would house 60,000 people. And the larger brick buildings held two to 300, but then the smaller wooden buildings held up to 600. 19 rows of that. So they destroyed seven villages that were on this site just to build this property. So they just... Displaced them. Displaced. They got rid of seven villages that were on this site just to make this camp. Look at all the burnt down. Destroyed buildings. I think we're going to find out what that is in a minute. There's another one on this side. So the model in the first site showed us model of the gas chamber. So these are the two death camps on actually one death camp on either side of us. And the model showed uh, essentially the workings of the gas chamber and crematorium that would design to kill thousands at a single time. So the building's been completely destroyed, obviously. Um, but this is actually where it's at. And there's a mirror image of another one on the other side of the track. So there's two of them right here. So this is the death camp. This is where they went to exterminate life. there in four different languages. Out of the almost three million that were executed during the war, about 1.1 million were executed here on this site. This is the courtyard. In hot months, in the winter months, they were becoming stories for additional blankets, jackets, things to warm up into. And the main room, and when you walk through, you will not see any sanitary thing, no access to water, no toilet, etc. No kitchen, because they were not existing inside the building. So we just finished our tour. All in all, it was about a four and a half hour tour, I think, between the between the two places. Yeah, about four and a half hours. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly, but you do learn a lot about everything that happened there. And it's kind of surreal standing in the same place as where all of that happened. But look, yeah, the tour it's guides huge. Are, the tour guides are very good though. They're very they all have first-hand experience, it seems like. So Yeah, they, they're very passionate about it. Very, very passionate about it. So if you come to Krakow, it would be good for you to try this tour out, at least try and visit and see. Yeah, we'll let it sink in a little bit and we'll yeah. touch back in a few minutes. There's a lot of lessons to be learned, but anyway, so the tour just finished. We're gonna go grab the bus and train back home and we'll see you later. <laughs> 